I just tested an 800 watt per channel stereo class D amp that weighs 17 pounds. Did it hit its power spec? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasella with Audioholics. So I got this amplifier in for testing. It's a company called Amped. It's the 2400 model. It's a 17 pound class D amplifier. It's rated at 400 watts a channel at eight ohms, 800 watts a channel at four ohms for stereo. You can see the back panel. It only has a pair of speaker terminals. So you can't connect two pairs of speakers at once. It's got XLR and unbalanced and triggered outputs and an on and off switch. Now, when I look at this amplifier, it doesn't throw high-end vibes to me aesthetically. For $6,000, I look at it and it appears to me like a Radio Shack project box that I used when I was in college when I was designing amplifiers. If I'm being honest, it doesn't scream high-end for the price that it carries. But I wanted to see its performance because what matters most to me is always performance and how it sounds. So I did a full bench test report. It's in the video description if you guys want to read it. I, I actually talked about listening tests. I did some comparisons with other amplifiers. I do encourage you to read. But let me share with you what I found on this amplifier. So let me start by saying the company claims that this product is made in the U.S., that's a bit of a misnomer, in my opinion, because they're using globally sourced parts. They're using the Pascal amplifier module and they're putting it into their own project box. And the Pascal is from overseas and the parts in it are from overseas. So really this product is assembled in the U.S. It's not made in the U.S. like the manufacturer claims. Now, the interesting thing is when this amplifier first came out, when Don got it in for review, it was $5,000 MSRP, and now it's $6,000. So obviously they raised their price because of the tariffs, which in itself doesn't make sense if it's made in the U.S., but I digress. Let's talk about the performance of it and just note the fact that it went up $1,000 in retail since this product came out. So the one thing that this company Amped does is they have their own, what they call AUSP class D technology. It's a hybrid approach that combines class A analog input stage with a high efficient class D output stage to achieve the best of both attributes is what the manufacturer claims. Now they're using the Pascal module. And in my experience with Pascal, it's a great class D amp if it's implemented correctly but it's very difficult to do continuous power testing with most implementations of this design. I've been testing these for quite some time. So when you look at my bench test results, it's a challenge. I tried my best to do as most accurate representation of this amplifier and how you would use it in real world. It didn't do that great with continuous test tones. And it makes it more of a challenge now because of the new FTC amplifier rule that came out last year, which I filed a petition for and had you guys sign so we could reopen the rule and revisit this. But they basically want you to precondition the amplifier at one eighth power for one hour in an eight ohm load. That's fine. But the test they want you to run in order for it to spec continuous power, they want the test to run five minutes straight. And then after that five minutes, you spot check frequencies, but they don't really tell you if it's a sweep or just spot check from 20 to 20 kilohertz. And it has to hit that power after it's been running for five minutes. This amplifier can't do that. And you'll see in my test results, after a couple hundred milliseconds, it goes into protection. Now, if we're going to compare apples to apples, there are amplifiers on the market that could do this all day long. I just tested the Yamaha RN2000 uh, receiver. That's 100 or 90 watts a channel uh, class AB amplifier. I ran that thing for six hours straight at rated power. It had no problems. It didn't. It got warm to the touch. It was very stable. I tested it at forums as well, completely stable. I've tested other class D amplifiers for the five minutes or longer at full rated power. They had no problems. This amplifier, of course, did have problems and we'll get into that into the test results. So the first thing is they have unbalanced and balanced connections. And in this case, 
the way they implemented this, there's really no advantage to the balanced connection. In fact, the gain structure is the same. It's 29 dB for balanced or unbalanced, which is unusual because there's usually a 6 dB difference on the inputs. The balanced inputs are usually 6 dB lower because the balanced outputs on the preamp are 6 dB higher. That's kind of a THX uh, convention and most consumer audio follows that. Not all consumer, but a lot of it does. But in this case, the gain is the same. But the distortion was actually a little bit worse with the balanced connection. It was 3 or 4 dB worse. The channel-to-channel -channel variance was a little bit worse. There's no strategic advantage to using the balanced connections on this amplifier. Now, if you do have a preamp and you do want to go XLR, you certainly can do that. But you're not going to get a performance advantage based on what I'm seeing here. Let's look at frequency response and distortion. The first thing I like to do is a 1 watt FFT to see the spectra. Now, I did not have the AUX 25 preconditioned filter from my Audio Precision. Some of the older Class D designs with lower switching frequencies, you need that preconditioned filter. Otherwise, it will mess up the results with the Audio Precision. This wasn't a problem. I wasn't seeing any slew-induced problems with the Audio Precision. I did see some out-of-band harmonics, but it wasn't horrible. If you look at the second-order harmonic, it's 104 dB below the fundamental. This is a clean measurement. And there's no ground loops, there's no humming in the transformers. This is, uses a regulated SMPS power supply. So you usually don't see a 60 hertz hum like you would with a toroid or an E-core transformer linear supply. So this looks pretty good. So far, I'm happy. When I was looking at frequency response, I tried to do a power sweep at rated power. This was tricky. So I had to limit the sweep time to 500 milliseconds at 8 ohms for the amplifier not to trip. And in this case, it delivered about 384 watts at under 1% THD plus N. So it's just shy of its 400 watt rating in that case. When I increased the sweep time to what I normally do, like a second or two, the power went down because the amplifier would shut off and I really got lower power. I got 283 watts. So realistically, I would say if I was testing this, like I test all other amplifiers, it was delivering about 280 watts. Now, if I ran this for the five minute rule per FTC, the actual power that I got was only 190 watts a channel. So if we're being strict per the new FTC amp rule, this 400 watt amp is really 190 watts with 3 dB of headroom. That's how I look at it. But what happened uh, that's interesting is at four ohms, we had some challenges here with the sweep times. I had to be careful not to trip the circuitry. I was only able to get about 540 watts into one channel and 625 watts into another. So again, because I'm using the XLRs, the, the uh, differences were a little off. That's not very tight tolerance, to be honest with you. I would have expected to see the wattage within you know 10 or 20 watts, but we're looking at a difference here of about 80 watts a channel, which is a little bit troubling or concerning to me. They should have had better tolerances here. But you're definitely not getting 800 watts a channel. Let's be clear about that. So when we look at the one kilohertz power sweep test, this is what you would see in the print magazine back in the day when they were doing measurements. Most of them are now not doing measurements. At 8 ohms, I got uh, 330 watts at 0.1% and 416 watts at 1%. So that's within the guideline of their spec of what they were saying is 400 watts a channel. Not going by the new FTC rule, of course. But at 4 ohms, this amplifier was heavily current limiting. I got close to about 350 watts before the current limiting really kicked in hard. But if you look at the 0.1% and 1% distortion uh, power ratings, we're at 230 watts and 280 watts, respectively. That's not 800 watts. That's not even close to 800 watts. And this is not a hard test. This sweep should have been no problem for this amplifier to pass. I'm very disappointed in that. The protection circuit is really hitting hard quickly. And I'm not sure if there was an app note that could have been better optimized to not have this happen because I've tested other Pascal modules that didn't suffer this. And I'll get into that in a minute. But when you look at the dynamic power testing at eight ohms, it's still under 400 watts. It's 360 watts at eight ohms. And at four ohms, I was about 724 watts. So burst testing, you get close to the 800 watts. Now it's important to note that any class D amplifier that uses a regulated power supply, and most do, and there's advantages to doing that, you're not going to get much headroom at all. 
the dynamic test you're going to get close to this continuous rating. In this case, because the, the uh, short circuit or the trip protection circuit was so sensitive, I couldn't do my regular sweeps, but I was able to do the dynamic burst to get close to its rated power. So we're talking milliseconds here in order for me to get to what the manufacturer is claiming 800 watts. And here's the power table. I basically gave all the summary of results here and you guys can read it here. And here's the FTC amplifier test. I'm going to start doing this now in all the new reviews. Again, it's 190 watts if you go by the strict test for 2024. Signal to noise ratio, I always look at one watt because this is where the amplifier spends most of its time and you can compare apples to apples per different brands and different amplifier topologies. This is actually a clean, uh, noise-free amplifier. It's about 89 dB, just a little short of 90 dB at one watt. This is what I like to see. Actually a good result here. Now, if we translate this out to full power, which is 400 watts, it should be close to 118 dB, which is what uh, amp specs. I calculate about 115 dB, so it's two or three dB off. It's possible they use the unbalanced connections and got a better SNR because, like I said, the balanced connections are not an improvement in this amplifier. So we did some listening tests. I used my Revel F328BEs as well as the Arendel Sound 1528 Bookshelf 8 speakers in my guest room, and I put it also in my theater room. I found that this amplifier sounded great um, driving both pairs of speakers. I did notice that the differences between amplifiers when I compared it to, I had a Denon A110 integrated amp and a Cambridge Audio Evo 150. The differences were more obvious when I listened to the Arendel 1528s. Even though it's a smaller speaker, the Arendels are a harder load to drive than the Revels. They have lower sensitivity. They have deeper bass extension than the large tower Revels. And it allows an amplifier to misbehave. So in this case, when I ran the Arendel 1528 bookshelf eights with the Evo 150, which uses a Hypex amplifier, not as high powered as this one, I was clipping that amp as I cranked it up and I played bass intense music. Now, interestingly, the Denon that only is rated at 90 watts a channel at eight ohms had no problem driving the Arendel speakers at full reference volume because that amplifier doubles down. It's stable down to two ohms, puts out almost 350 watts at two ohms that amplifier drove those speakers just incredibly well and when i go directly compared the lower power denon versus this amped 2400 i felt the amped maybe sounded a little more dynamic i had a little more bite a little more edge to it but the denon sounded more laid back calm and smooth so it's really your choice and your preference deciding on if this is the kind of amplifier sonic signature you like really depends on your room acoustics, your listening habits, your loudspeakers, and your preferences. But overall, I say that the Amp 2400 amplifier sounded better than the measurement results. And I don't want to disparage people saying, oh, well, you know, it didn't hit power spec or the measurements aren't the greatest. It actually is a good sounding amp in their defense. So some of the design drawbacks is really about how they implemented this design and how it can't handle continuous power test tones. I wanted to check my reference Pascal amp that I have in my theater room. It's a Storm Audio PA16 Mark II. It's got 16 channels, 200 by 16, but it uses a different module. And I think they just, they spent a lot of time really optimizing that design. And if you look at my measurements of the Storm Audio, this had no problem driving full power bandwidth. I got 250 watts at 1% and 220 watts at 0.1%, and it's rated at 200 watts a channel. And at 4 ohms, I got 500 watts at 1% and 436 watts at 0.1%. So this amplifier doubled down in having loading impedance, which is great. And the th cool thing about it is I was able to run full power bandwidth. So I got 200 watts full power bandwidth under 0.2% distortion. And at that was at eight ohms. And then at four ohms, I was able to get about 380 watts, closer to 400 watts um, at under 1% distortion. And I was able to run this for five minutes straight and it had no problems driving the lows. It didn't shut off. Not once did I get that amplifier to shut off. And that was a Pascal-based 
amplifier. You can see it's in my rack here. It's the amplifier down here. And when I compare this amplifier versus what's on the market, it's kind of a tough sale at $6,000 because you can get the NAD M23 for under 5,000. Now it's not as powerful as the Amp 2400, but it's a much more beautiful design. It measures more cleanly. It's got the Purify Class D module. This amplifier measures so good that I had to change my test rig just to measure it accurately. And it never had stability problems. I was always able to drive it a full power bandwidth for five minutes. The amp just did not shut off. Or if you want to stick to more traditional amps, you can get the Anthem STR, which is more powerful than the amped amplifier. It's stable down to two ohms. It's beautiful looking. It sounds great. It measures great. And there's other options too. If you like class D, Legacy makes an amplifier called the IV7, and there's different variants of it depending on how many channels you want. And you could go from two channels all the way up, and it's based on the Ice Edge, which is an excellent amplifier topology that can run full power bandwidth and pass the FTC five-minute rule. And it's a very, very powerful amplifier. If you look at the power specs on it, it could give you a 1,000 watts peak. It gives you 600 watts a channel at 8 ohms, and it's all channels driven depending on how you configure it. So the bottom line on the Amp 2400, it's a competent amplifier. It sounds good. It measures okay for the most part. I'm not happy with how it handles four ohms at continuous sweeps. I think for this amount of money for $6,000, there should be no excuse. There should be no special circumstances on how I have to measure the amplifier. To me, that sounds like something a cable salesman would tell you. You don't need special test gear to measure amplifiers. I've got the audio precision. That's a reference standard in the industry that every engineer uses to test and design amplifiers. The truth is this amplifier has a lot of protection built in and to its defense, Pascal makes some of the most time-tested class D modules on the market. They don't typically fail. So, you know, if you buy an amplifier that has a Pascal module, it's got longevity in it. The manufacturer gives you a five-year warranty, so that's a good thing. So guys, give me some comments down below. Do you own this amplifier? Are you considering it? Are you a fan of Class D, or do you stick more with the linear designs? If you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. And guys, November 8th at Maximum AV in Tampa, we're doing a listening event for JTR. We're going to have a full JTR system set up. Jeff Permanium is going to be there. We're going to have food. We're going to have fun. You guys have to make it out. Give me some comments if you're coming. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.